Ring that bell, Rocky. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. Uh, you are joining us live here from Northwest Ohio, Sylvania, Ohio, right outside of Toledo, Ohio, to be exact, and it is a dark, rainy day here. Um, for those of you that may be new, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world through our live streaming services how to empower animals and the people that care for them. So this morning, you're joining our co-host, Five Parrots, Rocky, Sunshine, Coco, Suki, Enrico, Milo, the mini pig, who is foraging down here, and Dylan Pickles, the ring-tailed lemurs that are here for training. Um, so yeah, welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. Good morning, Jennifer, Eva, Susie, Quentin, Shelly, Terry. Um, and in this episode, hi, Cotty and Adrian. In this episode, if anybody would like to join me live, um, feel free to let me know. I know most people don't like that. Um, we talk about this in our online live streaming services, our memberships in our programs, about how, tell them, Rock, um, about how showing yourself on video or live stream, um, <laughs> Kelly, that's not even half of the animals we have. Um, Showing yourself and your work on video or live stream makes you very vulnerable. Um, and um, I've been doing these live streams for <laughs> coming up on five years now. Coffee with the Critters is almost five years old, I believe, in March of 2020. Um, it's also hard for people to come on a live stream because well, you're live and it's unedited and that's what a lot of our services revolve around where i am showing myself live training um working on behavior modification or doing enrichment and i like doing live because it shows things unedited yeah so if i make a mistake boom i point it out and show how i recover from that mistake so i am going to have to stand up throughout the live stream today and deal with not deal with work with yours truly's and so we've got a replacement behavior happening here which um rocky rings his bell instead of screaming for attention we don't want him screaming for attention it's hard to do live streams when the animals when the birds are screaming like good job rock so what would you like them to do instead so rings his bell Replacement behavior. Enrico didn't make sound, but I'm reinforcing the behavior of stationing. Hi. And Sunshine's just saying hi. Good morning, or everybody. Um, Lori, Kathy. Karen, yes, Karen's, um, Carrie, Kramer, um, Wendy, Diane, Quentin, a lot of people are on here from our projects and our memberships. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to say Happy New Year. And so is Sunshine and Suki. Going to say Happy New Year to you. Good. Been training that. Welcome. Going to say Happy New Year, everybody. This is our last Coffee with the Critters for 2019. <laughs> These guys, guys aren't going to let me get a word in edgewise. Um, <laughs> Terry, I hear you. Um, good morning, everybody. So let's go ahead and get started. Happy New Year, Cambry. So yeah, it's a little dark here. 
We're in the middle, middle of a, a major rainstorm here in Northwest Ohio. Rain on December 29th, where is my snow? I'll tell you where snow is, she's in the house. For those that aren't aware, snow is our deaf and blind dog um, that we train here. Yeah, the animals that are not joining us this morning on Coffee with the Critters is um, Willie, the education turkey vulture here from Nature's Nursery for training. Um, Shello, the roller pigeon. Um, our two fish out in the center and our three dogs. Quincy, our Rottweiler, Levi, our deaf bulldog, and Snow, our deaf and blind uh, border collie. Okay, let's get started. Where do I begin? For anybody, let's get started here. For anybody who wants to get a hold of me um, or learn more about the services that we do and offer, because um, starting in the new year, you're going to be seeing a lot of services that we offer that we have not previously really um, focused on, such as a day with the trainer, um, our different workshops, um, our webinars. You can find out more about what we do on our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. And for anybody that wants to, good morning, Bobby. For anybody that wants to get a hold of me personally, you can always reach me on at my email address, which is Lara, L-A-R-A, -A, at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Okay, so let's get started with um, what's next. Get a couple of these things out of the way. Would any, yep, Milo's here. He's right there. And I've got a major kink in my neck because I fell asleep on my sister's couch on Friday night for two hours, and I have no idea what position <laughs> I was laying, but it was obviously not the right one. Um, so take a look at our events page. You'll see um, upcoming events that we're holding, having. Um, we're doing a lot of live streaming services for organizations in 2020. Um, in addition to our uh, memberships and programs, which are full of live streams. Right, Rock? Nice job. Um, so we live stream for different organizations across the world. Um, you can find that here on our events page, here on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page. Um, also, I am sitting down and writing a, new, a newsletter before January 1st. Speaking of January 1st, it's raining outside. There is no sun, and we will not see it here in Northwest Ohio until maybe April. Um, I'm fine with that, as long as there's snow. Uh, so you can join our email newsletter list, um, clicking here on our Facebook page. Let's see, what next do I want to talk about? Last week, we had our Coffee with the Critters, which was on enrichment. Um, we're going to be doing those probably once every four to six weeks. We got a lot of feedback from um, last week's episode. So you can find all previous episodes of Coffee with the Critters where we live stream every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. You can find them here on our Facebook page by just going under videos, or you can find them on our um, YouTube channel. Happy New Year to you, Liz. Let's see, what else was I going to say about that? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, sign up for our email newsletter list because I'll be sitting down working on that probably today and tomorrow. We're going to be doing a lot of training here at the center today. So if you are in our memberships or our projects, stay tuned. That's right, Rock. Um, where our level one membership is for companion animals, level two is for professionals and people thinking about getting in the field or wanting to know more about applied behavior analysis, positive reinforcement, and how it applies to all animals. Good morning, Colette. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we have our projects which are species specific, such as the Parrot Project. We have a lot of people in here this morning in the Parrot Project and level one. So happy new year to everybody. Um, let's see what we got next. Okay, before we start talking about new year's goals and resolutions, this is something that happened within the past week. On Christmas Eve, we very rarely open our doors to the public. Um, we do for workshops, um, our services such as a day with the trainer. Um, but last week we opened our doors to on Christmas Eve 
to the families of the volunteers here. We have some very dedicated volunteers. Some of our volunteers have been with us over seven years and Karen Pratt is one of those. She is on here with us. Um, and then Karen, there she is. Doo -doo -doo. Karen, there is Karen Pratt. Don't forget that you can reach me for navigational questions, registration, and our renewals. I am always happy to help. Thank you, Karen. Um, Karen is very involved in our work here, as are all of our volunteers. But last week we had um, the families of the volunteers come in. Um, where do I start with that? Because one of those family members was my lovely mother. <laughs> we talked about this. Um, so we had the families come in and I had the, um, the volunteers got to walk them around at their own pace, interact with different animals. Um, they got to go in and meet Dylan Pickles, the lemurs here for training. Um, we are really focused on behavior training and enrichment here at the center. Um, good morning, Sylvia and Susie um, and Jim. Hey, Jim. Um, we're really focused on behavior. So many people that want to volunteer here say, I want to volunteer. I'll just clean cages. And only the people that know what they're doing, meaning understanding behavior, understanding history and reinforcement and understanding applied behavior analysis are the ones that get to pick up poop. Because if I'm in this enclosure sitting here working, morning Mark and Susie Chen, um, if I am sitting here working inside of an enclosure, getting animals to station, getting animals um, to, that's what we're doing here in this photo. Uh, I believe this is Brian, a friend of Edie's a volunteer. Um, teaching dill and pickles how to station. If we don't want them running out the front door, because we already know what that looks like, they're way up there, um, what do you want them to do instead? So what we do is get them to station at the back of their enclosure. They cannot run out the front door if they're stationed in the back of their enclosure. Um, this is one of the first things we do with any animal that comes in here. Good morning, Jude and Kathy. Jude, I'm glad you have sunshine out there in Utah. I have sunshine here. I have sunshine and snow at the same time here at the Animal Behavior Center. Um, in order to change a problem, you have to, re in order to change a behavior, you have to replace it with another behavior. So one thing people don't pay attention to is things like this, okay? Got a bird stationing here, not vocalizing. Don't forget to reinforce that behavior. Oftentimes people don't reinforce until the undesired behavior starts happening, such as screaming, because screaming is what gets your attention. And I always tell people, the hardest thing to do is pay attention. That is the hardest thing for people to do. So if you want that behavior to maintain or increase, don't forget to reinforce it, right? Um, a lot of times dogs, <laughs> dogs jump. The jumping is what gets the attention. And that's when people usually, oh, I really, I really on the station out there. Um, that's what gets the attention. I'm gonna reinforce that, I don't mind. Milo here sitting at my feet. Um, it's when the undesired behavior starts to happen that gets the attention. And when once the undesired behavior happens, too late to reinforce an alternate behavior. Um, I got to reinforce this, guys. Um, so back to the volunteers and their families. This is James, uh, boyfriend of volunteer Lindsay Douglas. 
I believe holding a bird for the first time, and that would be Rocky. And do you remember, remember, does anybody remember what was happening here at the Animal Behavior Center this time last year? What was happening in January of 2019? Um, hey, Mary, there's a level two, couple, we've got a couple level two members in here. Yep, it's easy to forget to reinforce the behavior you want because the animal is not calling attention to itself. Yep. Um, so Mary is a professional dog trainer. And Mary, I can't remember what state you are from. Um, so yeah, so many times I stand here with people and uh, that bring in dogs. And one of the number one behaviors with dogs that they want to change is the jumping. First, Rocky, why don't you go ring your bell? Just talking to him, I may reinforce that sound. What is, yes, Wendy, Wendy remembers. Oh, and so does Jude. Oh, and Carrie, yeah, yeah. What I was looking for was this time last year, we were training Rocky for the commercial that he was in. He was in four different commercials and probably still is for Stanley, Stanley Steamer uh, nationwide. Yeah. That's what was happening here last year. Um, yep, it was last January. I believe it was January 13th, 14th, and 15th where Rocky was on set. Um, so yeah, a lot of times I sit here and people want to change the behavior and I hear this a lot that a couple of the toughest behaviors to change with dogs in particular, a couple of them are jumping, eating poop, and excessive barking. Um, we're gonna have an extinction bird here. Bear with me. You may wanna mute yourself. <laughs> um, I could tell we were going to have a extinction burst happening here because I paid attention to distant antecedents. Yes, Sylvia. Sylvia is another professional dog trainer from Ontario. Um, Rocky does love men. Bear with me. One thing I don't do here at the center is if an animal starts screaming, I don't try to compete with that. So I just be quiet and not try to talk over it. Um, so I'm watching out of the corner of my eye, alternate behavior. Looks like he's going to his food dish. And he's heading to his bell. And the bell, okay, so what I did was just extinguish the screen. Okay, that's all that was. Um, ring the bell. So that behavior, good, was it getting the earning the reinforcer? So he went to the alternate behavior, the replacement behavior. That does work, okay? So, gotta reinforce that too, hang on. You're seeing and hearing is replacement, are replacement behaviors that have been trained. Um, differential reinforcement, shaping is differential reinforcement. Extinguish the undesired behavior, which means ignore it and reinforce an alternate behavior. 
So we've taught Rocky to we've taught Rocky to ring a bell. You're also seeing something called intermittent schedules of reinforcement. So not every time do I reinforce that behavior of sunshine making noise in the wild. Okay, dogs jumping, I hear is one of the hardest behaviors to train, change. Um, first identify why the dog is jumping. Um, if it's for attention, extinguish the attention, deliver the reinforcer for an alternate behavior. What I see here with people that come in with dogs is the dog is sitting. We've taught the dog to sit for the attention instead. Um, and people don't pay, and I'll sit there and go, your dog is sitting, your dog is sitting, reinforce that behavior, and they're like, oh, I wasn't paying attention, and then all of a sudden the dog jumps. It's too late to um, reinforce in that particular instance. Um, good morning, everybody. Okay, so, hmm. back to the volunteers so we can move on to our New Year's resolutions. If anybody wants to come on live with me today, let me know. Most people don't want to. I get that. I understand that. So, yeah, Rocky loves men, and this time last year, he well, January 13th of last year, he was on set with about 40 different men. Uh huh. So I had my hands full of behavior. Okay, so here we have Lindsay's family, which is her mom, taking a picture of Cello on Sydney's head and Ryan in the background. Cello on Lin or, um, Kendall's head. And I believe that's all the photos I pulled up of this. Yeah, I did. So let's... Melinda says, this does work very well with my CAG. Ignoring the scream can be a challenge, though. Yeah. Um, and what I suggest to people, studies show that one of the most unbearable things to deal with is uncontrollable noise. And welcome to the world of parrots. But you can't control that. And a lot of times, depending on the animal you're working with, in order to control the behavior of one animal, we need to control the behavior of another first. We do that all the time. Okay, if you hear this coffee with the critters, you're going to see me doing a lot of reinforcing of replacement behaviors. So we got a lot of um, comments and feedback last year, um, or last this past week, um, <clears throat> for past episodes, people wanting to know where to find them. So that's why I directed you to <clears throat> um, our YouTube channel. Differential reinforcement involves two schedules of reinforcement. Extinction and reinforcing another behavior or several different behaviors. Um, it's one of the most successful forms of changing behavior. Um, so as far as our New Year's resolutions... Um, as far as New Year's resolutions and goals, I'll tell you this. Listen to that beautiful quietness. This time last year, we were working on goals for 2020. Rocky! So a lot of the goals you'll see starting to happen in 2020 began the beginning of 2019. 
Um, and I did create this graphic real quick for this morning. A successful new year happens all year long. Um, I am not a person to focus on necessarily a particular date. Um, so New Year's resolutions, I guess it's a time of year for everybody to come up with what they want to do, what they meant to do, January 1st of 2019. But this is one of my pet peeves about the new year. Um, many times what I see is people having good intentions. People having good intentions, but then life starts happening. And that behavior modification or goal uh, goes to the wayside. Good. So, what I found with a lot of people who come up with New Year's resolutions, <laughs> I'm never going to be able to sit down. A lot of people that come up with New Year's resolutions. Um, and wait for the new year for it to happen, it doesn't, they don't necessarily stick to it. And I think that, um, yeah, most of the time I see people don't stick to it. I modify, there's behavior issues I have that I like to change. I am a huge procrastinator. I even bought a book um, in regards to applied behavior analysis and procrastination. That I bought this time last year and I still haven't read it. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So I've come up with a behavior modification plan for myself. Somebody remind me to talk about my mother. I deliver a reinforcer to Coco, but he is foraging. Um, I've come up with a behavior modification plan for myself. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to come on here with me, I saw you just sent me a text, Shelly, and I just took a look at it. So what topics do I want to talk about today? Um, let's talk about um, New Year's goals and resolutions and um, anything and what you plan on doing for the new year, how you plan on sticking to that. So I'm going to give away a little piece of personal uh, what things that I do that I love to do. Um, in my spare time, which is next to none, I love to play cooking games on my phone. My sister knows this. We sit down every Friday and play cooking games. Okay. So I don't pay for any of them. Um, one of my favorite cooking games, which I am addicted to is it, 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 I do that because it's just some me time, just some me time to take my focus off of everything and just sit down and relax kind of a little bit. Um, my favorite cooking game is called Cooking Diary. <laughs> my sister hates it. <laughs> but anyways, I've incorporated my cooking games into my behavior modification plan of modifying my procrastination. Okay. And so sometimes I'll take a break. I usually do this three times a day. In the morning after I've finished all my work, like yesterday morning I was up at three, got out of bed at 4.15, worked on the computer until 12.30. Um, and once I'm done with all my computer work, I will play probably about 20 minutes of Cooking Diary. Um, 
Well, in between there, you have to watch these commercials to get more points. I get it. I understand it. Some of these commercials last 30 seconds. 30 seconds will positively punish my behavior of playing that game. Okay. Like I said, somebody remind me to tell, talk about my mom. Um, and so what I found, I'm like, this is going to positively punish my behavior of playing my cooking game. <laughs> so what I do is hit play commercial. So I sit down my phone, and a lot of times I have to play three 30-second commercials. So I'll sit my phone down here, and I start working on something that I've been procrastinating on, which is usually the filing of... The filing and organizations of um, people that register for um, our memberships and pro, uh, projects. I put those, I do things in a certain order um, and I will sit there and work on all of those while I'm playing my chicken games. Or getting my expense reports and my taxes ready for my CPA. That is something I do not like to do, but I'll set the phone down and I'll start working on my expenses. Um, and you know what? It works. Something else I'd like to change is I'd like to clean my desk. My desk is a very organized mess. And I have a very beautiful desk. At least I did five years ago because that's the last time I saw it. <laughs> And I have a glass top desk that I have sat artwork underneath as part of my behavior modification plan. I've put artwork underneath that if I clear off my desk, I can see that artwork. Um, and it works. Eva says one year my resolution was to put off procrastination. It worked. <laughs> um, Quentin says, I'll come on live. I love facing my fears. Quentin, let me get you a link to join me live. Let's see if I can do this. So I have to go on Facebook. Oh. Hmm. For some reason, good morning, Daphne. For some reason, oh, there it is. Okay, so I got to find Quentin, Q U E N T I N, um, and send Quentin. I am going to send you a link in Facebook Messenger to join me online. So I thought this would be a great way to. Now it's going to probably take Quentin. Uh, no, it won't. Because I've met Quentin online before in the Parrot Project. So you guys are going to meet longtime watcher of Coffee with the Critters, Quentin Lesh. Um, Quentin procrastinated on joining, I believe he's only in the Parrot Project right now, for like months. And then he finally joined. Um, but he's been a big viewer and follower of Coffee with the Critters. Okay, and I think, Shelly, if you want to join me, I'm going to send you a link to Shelly so you guys can meet these people. Shelly, I'm going to send you the link to join us as well. So give them a couple of minutes 
to jump in here. Um, so we're talking about New Year's goals and resolutions. Um, one thing I don't, I incorporate resolutions every month. Um, and I will do like a year in review what has worked for me, um, what hasn't, why didn't that work, um, what's the reinforcer behind it not working, or what was the punisher behind it not working. Um, good morning, Brianna. So somebody's coming on, and it's Shelly. So let's go ahead and bring Shelly on. We're talking about, you ready, Shelly, to come on? Okay, Shelly's down in the lobby. Um, I'm gonna bring her on. So we're talking about New Year's resolutions. And bear with me with my noise here. So here comes Shelly, coming in three seconds while we wait on Quentin. Good morning, Shelly. Good morning. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining. I think um, very few people have done this impromptu, impromptu joining me on Coffee with Critters. Well, I'm normally on my way to church right now, but I contracted something from Shannon's that uh, I don't want to share with anybody. So I decided to stay home and hang out with the birds today. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. When people come in here um, and say they're sick, I ask them to just please stay home. Nobody else wants to get sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, Shelly, you got some New Year's goals and resolutions? Yes, I do, which they're very similar to last year. Um, well, Bear with I wanted... me. Keep going. Okay. So, um, you know, obviously continuing education, that's nonstop. Um, I want to get everyone here to a point where there's no collars that need to be worn. You know, I'm hoping that just with continuing to modify things, I do have two of them on pain medication now after doing that phone consult and I am seeing amazing results with one of them. Um, Great. And something I want to talk about too, just saying wanting to get collars off of, um, <laughs> Daphne, wanting to get collars off of certain animals. Um, you know, I will use a positive punisher if the result of not using it is worse. But if I have to use, if a positive punisher, such as a collar, has to be a part of a behavior modification plan, um, I'm also focusing on the training of once that positive punisher is out of the behavior modification plan. Yep. Well, and the one, the one that I'm seeing such success with when we sedated him, his right leg has been badly broke and poorly healed. Um, it is actually almost a full inch shorter than the other one. And he is a Gotham. So, and you know, that much is drastic. Uh, and he also has, um, his left knee is uh, out of joint. There's an injury there as well. So the medication has changed him completely. Um, in fact, there he is. Can you see him yep. right now? Yep. yep. Yeah. He flies all over the living room. He hangs upside down. He is just a nut job. Um, and then of course, tequila had had one on for a short while, but as you can see, little, Good job, Rock. I'm listening. Little, Little precious baby does not have to wear one anymore. She still, she still breaks some of her feathers off, um, but it has it has gone down probably seventy percent. Good. I see Quentin. He's waiting in the lobby, so I'll bring Quentin on as soon as we're done here. And um, people are asking. Um, don't forget to tell the story of your mom because that's using applied behavior analysis to modify behavior. Um, applied behavior analysis, as we know, especially in the projects and the memberships. Good. 
um, applied behavior analysis is about the laws of behavior. It's not about a specific species. It's about the individual. Um, so sorry, I got a lot going on here. What other New Year's New Year goal do you have, Shelly? Oh, I want to double the size of the one outdoor aviary. So instead of 18 by 20, I want it to be uh, 40 by 18. Um, continuing education, that's continuing. where the key, that's where the key is. Yeah, um, continuing education is a big yeah. one. Uh, this is an interesting guy right here. Um, this is the newest intake. This is Charlie. He is not wearing a collar, is not going to wear a collar, and was deemed... <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, we got it. <laughs> what happened? Is, uh, well, what, what happened, beautiful? This is, this is a diva right there. So who knows what happened? He might have dropped something on her head. But, um, but this guy right here. <laughs> Let me walk away. Oh, yeah. Mother is delivered. Yes. Well, there's, there's 26 here right now. So. I'd be, I'm going to have to turn that down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kelly says, wow. Well, um, people are saying tequila looks great. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. And Sylvia says one of her New Year's resolutions is to try to train my husband not to undo my dog training. <laughs> yeah, that happens yeah. here as well. <laughs> good, good luck with that. I, I will bow down and kiss the feet of anybody that can ever figure that one out. Yeah. I always tell people some of the hardest things I've had to train is the people. Cause when we're actually doing the training, we're actually training the people, um, how to understand reinforcing desired and undesired behavior and the punishing of desired behavior. Right. So, so, so the, the story with this guy is he was sold to a lady down around Indianapolis who contacted a friend of mine and said that um, he's not the bird. He's not the bird that was listed for sale. He is a wild, crazy, uh, big like everybody. They were going to, I spent between two days, I spent four hours on the phone with her and to hear her say after that, that she was just going to get welding gloves. And... I probably said a few inappropriate things, but thankfully Rosie, Rosie went and paid the $500 and drove all the way down to Indianapolis and brought me this wild, crazy bird. He's, just, he's psycho, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, he is growing yep. tons of new feathers in. And that's and, uh, the key, you know, um, Remove once we remove the labels, we can now focus on behavior and using observable, measurable behavior to change behaviors and to reinforce desired behavior. Well, and you and I both know exactly what we're seeing here we're seeing overstimulation and sexual interest. Yeah, and with so, that being said, um. Because here at the Animal Behavior Center, we train numerous species of animals, um, focusing on the exotics, but not limited to, um, to show people how to understand applied behavior analysis, positive reinforcement. And if you don't know the behavior of an animal, even an individual animal, um, you can understand them and know them through training. Shelly, I want to, um, because we've only got a a few minutes yep. left. I want to thank you for coming on and hopefully in your continuing education in the new year it involves 
you continue your level two membership and your subscription to the Parrot Project, and I thank you for being a part of both of them. Uh, don't forget level one. And oh, level one. Two. Yeah, yeah, you're in all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the, the diva has to say goodbye here. She likes it to be about her. Oh, yeah. Well, thank oh, you yeah. for the great work you're doing in the world of parrots, Kelly. Yeah, I love them. Cockatoo Ranch is uh, a fun place to be. And happy New Year to you and your flock. Thanks for coming on this morning, and I hope you feel better. Yep. I'm going to go uh, try to get my 200 pounds of nuts in the shower today. Okay. <laughs> they, they put them on sale. Some of these places are going a dollar a pound. I just have okay. to find them. So. Okay. Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck. Happy New Year, Shelly. Thanks for coming right. on. Bye. Okay, next I want to bring on Quentin. That is Coco in the background. Wow, she's erupting all over me. Quentin, you ready to come on? Good morning, Quentin. Happy New Year. Good morning. Happy New Year. <laughs> so everybody said they missed me being out here in the center instead of upstairs in my office. So this is what happens when I come out to the center. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty weird last week not hearing any screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was getting messages and emails from people saying, would you please go back out to the center? And I was like, are you sure? Okay. <laughs> um, yes. Um, <clears throat> so happy new year, Quentin. You too. What is on your agenda for the new year? What are some of your goals? Um, so some of you guys are aware in the Para Project, um, a couple months ago we did a consultation with Peyton, my uh, Blue Front Amazon. Yep. And uh, I was having problems with him approaching his cage and him biting and attacking me. Um, I'm to the point now where I can approach his cage and not get have him lunge and bite at me. I have been slacking on taking that next step forward with training. So what? Um, to be able to try to get him to step up. So like I said, I can approach the cage without him biting, um, but I kind of just fell off with there. So I want to continue that training with him to where I can get him to where I can hold him and, and not get bit. Okay. So, so I'm going to continue that training. Yeah, and Quentin, you're in the parrot project. Um, let me reinforce. So, applied behavior analysis is about the individual, not the species. Yeah. I have the same thing going on. <laughs> well, they're responding to. That's sunshine responding to whoever that is in the background there. That's so, me. okay, Quentin, what is what is so you're working on approaching the cage? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is your what are you thinking your next? Step would be. Um, I honestly forget. So I want to go back and rewatch the, the consultation that you and I did mm -hmm. uh, to figure out what my next step is as far as uh, what step I need to take next. With him. So I can get his treat out. And as soon as he sees me even go towards his treat somewhere, he will station right away. And he knows that he's going to get that treat. And like I said, I can approach him without him even lunging and fighting or anything. So I have, we are good, we are excellent with the staging pose. But, um, so I think you take that, put your back, rewatch everything, and take that next step forward. Okay. Because there's, like, if I'm, one of the first things I do with any animal, one of the first things I do with any animal is just approach, feed, walk away. Approach, feed, walk away. So I'm pairing myself as a conditioned reinforcer so that animal starts looking forward. You guys wanted me out here. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so I can start in like we've learned this in the parrot project. And I just did this the other day with sunshine. When I'm feeding an animal, I'm not necessarily looking at their mouth. I'm looking at what does their behavior look like? What does the rest of their behavior look like? Um, and I won't move to the next step until I'm very comfortable. I know what I'm seeing. For Pete's sake. <laughs> Um, and then one of the things I'll do is teach the animal to station like you have with Peyton. One of the next things I suggest you do, because do you feel, let me ask you this. Do you feel comfortable sticking your hand in? No. Good. If he had, if he has a treat, like you did in your live stream the other day with cleaning sunshine, sunshine's cage. Uh, when he has that treat and he's on that, that three by four, you're fine. When Peyton has his treat, I can do whatever I want in the cage. I can get real close to him, and I'm fine. If he doesn't have his treat, no. That's, okay. I'm definitely fearful. One of the next things I suggest, and one of the things I always tell people, if you're nervous, do not do it. Because if you're nervous, that means something. Um... If you're nervous, it means because you're not sure what the animal's going to do. And if you're not sure what the if the animal's not, if you're not sure what the animal's going to do, the animal's not sure of your intention either. Yeah. So one of the next things I do in um, the uh, off contact training. Um, so if you make a mistake and you get lunged at or bit, at least it wasn't your finger. But don't try not to make that mistake again, because if you do, then the undesired behavior is being reinforced. Yep. What I suggest you take, Quentin, is teach Peyton a beak target. A beak target, and then the difference between a beak target and a foot target. And I will do this with any animal. This is what I did with um, Mona, the monkey. Um, I taught her the difference between a, a nose target and target. That teaches them focus and control. Um, it also teaches them to look for what do you want to do next. Um, <clears throat> teaches them what do you want them to do next. Um, it teaches them to focus on what you're asking of them. And it teaches them a new way of learning. Um, and then once once you can teach, and then we're going to slowly fade out the target stick and have the target turn into your finger, okay? And then, um, like we've, we've seen in the Parrot Project with Frank Cars, how he is now able to get his bird. Yeah, he's, he's done a wonderful job with Blue. Yeah. And did you see the work we're doing with Marie? I think she's in Australia. Yeah. Uh, getting her bird is afraid of skin, okay? Afraid of skin. That's like with this one here. Um, we briefly talked about her where I could never pick her up. And now I can pick her up without any problem. And it's all because of the training that you taught us and myself that I can pick her up off her cage without getting bit. And it's it's great. And it's not just the training aspect that's great about the parrot project, it's the the raw whole foods that we talk about. You know, the stuff with like China Prairie and having Jason come in and talk to us. We can get rid of these supplements that people are putting in their foods and drinks. And we can sum them with whole foods that, and we get the same exult, the results and we're not giving them chemicals. Yeah. And that's, that's what I, I love. Yeah. And I'm seeing diets change here through, through I'm seeing diets and reinforcers change here through feeding raw. Uh, and we've changed the feed raw now with, I'd say, 95% of our animals. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay. Well, good. And let's, you know, carry, let's keep this going, Quentin, because I want to keep you moving forward. Let's keep that moving forward in the Parrot Project because I've got everything planned out or, you know, and I will adjust my plans as we go along so yeah. we get you picking Peyton up again. Yep. And then my next one is I want to get an outdoor aviary. 
I will be doing that this year. So the last time I was up to helping Wayne, um, <clears throat> I don't know if when you were up there, they have all those outside cages out there. Mm -hmm. I've been um, up there a couple times. And so that's what I'm going to be doing this year for the, for the birds to have them outside more. So you get those upper for them. So you can get that get that UV light and everything. Good. Um, Sylvia asked a question. Um, what changes do you see? I'm not, oh, maybe she's talking about what are you talking about, Sylvia? Is it about the food? Did you say you saw changes with the diet change? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this one here, she'll eat anything. I'll put a car tire in her in her cage That's and she'll eat it. Um, but it's great, and I pretty much got rid of all the pellets except for the tops pellets. Um, wow, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Peyton, he just swore, anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the like I said, it's the whole food, it's the it's the gray wood. Um, I've noticed a difference with this one here with her hormones. Her hormones are horrible this time of year, and I'm putting the hormone havoc in. And with her food, and she's not as bad. She's still bad, but it's nowhere near as bad. So I don't have to put like the AVCOM, the chemicals and stuff like that in. It's yeah. it's the natural whole foods that it, it's healthy for them, healthier for them. They're gonna live longer, <clears throat> and we're not like I said, we're not pumping them full of these chemicals that could deplete their lives. Same thing with us. Like I was just talking. Yeah. With, uh, a board certified behavior analyst the other day and we were talking about dog food. Um, and I told her where I went to um, a presentation at ABAI, Applied Behavior Analyst International a couple of years ago and it was on the feeding of humans, the feeding of humans and processed food. And um, some of the side effects and behavior changes we see from that. And I was like, okay, I've already switched my dogs to raw. Why have I not done this with the birds? So we did. I've done, I've done it with myself. This last time I saw you, well, since July, I've lost 60 pounds from cutting out the foods, the carbohydrates, and the sugars. That's great. So, and that's just in like six months I've lost 60 pounds. So, so not only do I feel better, but I feel that I'm going to live longer because I got rid of all that processed foods. Good, good. So I've been watching your progress on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> well, Quentin, um, it's about two minutes till. People still want to hear the story of my mom, so I've got to tell that real quick before we end. Okay, sounds good. So, thanks for coming on, and Happy New Year's, Quentin. Happy New Year. Good to hear all the work you're doing. Take Thank care. Thank you. Okay, so I'll tell you real quick. Um, about my mom. My mom was here for the Christmas Eve family day. And this isn't, mom would kill me if she knew I was talking about her on live. Um, she wanted to go, and I told this story, I believe partially in level one and level two. Um, this is where I use applied behavior analysis to, to change behavior. Mom immediately walked towards the lemur cage and was going to open the door. Mom has never been in there before. And I looked at her and I said, what are you getting ready to do? She goes, well, I'm going to go in the lemur cage and pick up the poop. And I was just like, well, let me tell you what's going to happen. And um, let me get, tell you what's going to happen if you open that door. Good job, Coco. We're going to have two lemurs running around this room. So... What I did is if you want to change behavior, such as her reaching for the lock on the lever cage, what behavior would you like her to do instead? So I immediately said, will you help me? There's something I need more help with. And she's like, sure, because she obviously was doing it because she wanted to help me. So I'm like, will you go in? And I grabbed a food in a water dish and I targeted her hands to it. And I said, will you go in and feed them? And she's like, I'd love to. So replacement behavior. I don't want her reaching for the cage. So I targeted her hands to the food dish, dishes. So now the undesirable behavior, differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior. She cannot unlock the cage door if there's food dishes in her hands. So I asked for help. 
she is my mom. She loves to help me. So I knew that was a reinforcer asking for help. Um, targeting her hands to the food dishes. I cued the lemurs to their station. She went in. She wanted to interact with the lemurs. So I delivered the reinforcer of her interacting with the lemurs. Yes. So there is a great way to um, reinforce alternate or um, replacement behavior. <laughs> um, so anyways, let's go ahead and finish up. Um, for those of you that follow the work we do, um, we have our, our projects. Um, they're species specific projects um, where people want to know how to use applied behavior analysis with these different uh, particular species of animals. Uh, we also then have um, our level one and level two membership. Level one is based on companion animals. My vol our volunteers are here. Um, using applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement with companion animal animals. Level two is geared toward professional trainers or people thinking about getting in the field. We do a lot of work with um, a variety of species, uh, particularly zoo, but definitely not limited. You'll see all my lemur training in there as well. Um, if you want to find out more about those, you can find out about our services on our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. You can, thanks, Eva. <laughs> you can also reach me at laura at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. And I also wanted to say, keep this in mind, too, because this is the season of giving. Um don't forget to give to yourselves. Your animals will thank for thank you for it. And our memberships and projects give all year long. Um, contact me for any information. We've had a couple of people um, ask for gift vouchers to give away as gifts for the holiday season. We have gift vouchers for level one, level two, um, all the projects, and um, some of our products that we sell here. We only sell the products that we use. The Animal Behavior Center um, has a referral program, which every five people you refer to us that sign up for our memberships or projects, you get a one hour, free one hour consultation. Pay attention to our events page um, on our website and our Facebook for our upcoming workshops. And um, here's the target sticks that we sell. The station mats we also sell our treat pouches so with that being said happy new year everybody um we have a lot of guests coming up in january and february and scheduling into march if there's a particular topic you would like me to discuss please feel feel free to email me i will be more than happy to review it happy new year here's to resolutions all year long stop procrastinating yes Note to self. <laughs> okay, take care, everybody. Thank you.